This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at GDC 2014. To my immediate left is Brian Bruning, Vice President of Business Development for Technical Illusions. Welcome to the program, Brian. Nice to see you again, Neil. Now, each time I visit Technical Illusions, you, you seem to be making one improvement over the next. So what's, what's the latest in Technical Illusions innovation? Well, we're excited to be here at Game Developer Conference 2014, showing off our latest hardware iteration. So um, what we've done you now is take the HD glasses that you saw and, and at, at experienced at CES, and we continue to make additional refinements. One of the key things that we've done is we've moved from a active shutter glasses to passive polarization. That has a couple of really beneficial um, enhancements there. One is which, of course, less complexity and less cost in the product itself, but also uh, the passive polarization allows for it to be brighter in image. So what you're going to be seeing when you experience Cast AR here at the show is a much brighter image um, and, and actually a larger field of view than you saw at CES. I'm, I, 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 I didn't, that didn't even click. When I tried the demos, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that they were, they were passive glasses. So just to confirm for, for our viewers who aren't yet familiar, uh, shutter glasses literally alternate left, right very quickly with a dark versus transparent status. Uh, so you see this 3D image, but passive, I take it, you're somehow managing to filter the light differently for each eye, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, how? And so you you said you were getting a better field of view from this. What what would you estimate the field of view is on this? Well, actually, every time we iterate the product, we are building and improving our optics. And so the the uh, optical engine, which is in front of the projector engine, has continued to be refined and improved. And you're starting to see a larger field of view. Um, and we're still we can, uh, expect to continue improving that for the final commercial versions as well. Now, uh, are you having any drop in resolution from using passive versus shutter glasses? No, in fact, it's a, a higher clarity, a higher um, um, contrast, and those kind of um, optical elements. It looks better on the on the screen the more we continue to refine the product. You know, it occurs to me because normally with a passive monitor, you know, from the 3D days, it usually required interlacing, where each line represented either the left or the right, and you couldn't have both at the same time. But I take it in this case because you're using retro reflective, you don't have to have that sacrifice, is that correct? Like you could literally have full resolution left eye, full resolution right eye, correct. and not give up anything in 3D, is, is that correct? That is correct, we are, we are driving our projectors um, at full speed, 120 hertz per eye, um, with full resolution per eye, because we have two projectors. Exactly, and and because you, uh, all I'm saying is because of the retro reflective, you're not you don't have to give have sacrifices like we would have with other passive technologies. Uh, exactly, that, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking out loud here, so that's very impressive. And uh, I, d are there brightness advantages to this as well? Well, certainly, um, in in certain uh, challenging lighting environments, having a little bit brighter image um, works really well. Uh, also, as we find with certain games, um, the, the color palette of the game and the contrast. To the, the gray material as well as lighting conditions make um, a brighter image more appealing. And so it just becomes more lifelike. Now, I, I realize this might be gobbledygook for, for some of our, our viewers. Maybe you could briefly explain how this technology works. Certainly. Um, so essentially, Cast AR, the projected augmented reality mode of what we do, and there are, there we go, I'm going to block my face. Um, there are uh, three modes for Cast AR. There's projected augmented reality, there's augmented reality, and then there's virtual reality. Here at GDC, we're focused on, on demonstrating the projected augmented reality portion of this. This involves two micro projectors mounted above your eyes that are projecting uh, a left and right image at 1280 by 720 out into the environment. Um, where, where we hit a retroflective surface that's bouncing the image back at, the, at, at your eyes, and the end result is that you have a hologram-like image um, on the surface in front of you. Now you're able to look around that image from any angle because we're tracking your eye mo or your head movements via a camera that's mounted on the glasses that are tracking an infrared LED emitter that's on the surface material. So this allows us to know where you're positioned with submillimeter accuracy in the environment. So it becomes a, an interactive view. Now those three components are complemented by a fourth component. The glasses, the tracker, and the fabric that you, your surface that you display upon, you also have an, a, infra, a, a, a depth sensing wand that allows you to interact with the uh, scene itself. We're not showing the wand here because we're going through another hardware iteration of it, um, but that is the fourth component that will be part of the consumer package. 
do you, do you think, uh, I mean, 12, it, by the way, it looks very impressive. So by asking the question, I hope it's not taken as a kick, but do you, do you anticipate even going higher resolution than 1280 by 720? Not for our commercial units, no. But it could, uh, it could appear. Uh, We've had customers who've asked us for vertical markets, uh, whether we could improve the resolution um, even further uh, for their specific needs in those markets. And absolutely, um, you know, we were really limited there by the, the size and weight and cost of the projectors themselves and the optical path. But um, ultimately, for the consumer experience, as you've seen, it's a phenomenal, magical experience just at 720p. Now, uh, I understand there's also a clip-on for VR purposes. I, I, I don't think it's on display here. Can you tell us anything about it? Well, the AR VR clip-on, which is one of the things we've talked about during our Kickstarter campaign, essentially is a, uh, a low-cost add-on to the cast AR glasses which sit in front of it, and through a series of reflectors and optical expanders, takes the projected image that you're uh, coming off the glasses and puts it back, instead of on the surface, in front of you, onto your eyes. And so that allows you, if you have a uh, projector back on your eyes, it would be an a AR type experience like Google Glass, um, but with full resolution and, and full field of view. Um, or if it was an occluded view, if you had the visors down and projected back on your eyes, it would be a VR experience. Well, I was impressed. One of the things that I checked for is how far back I could walk from the display to see if it would significantly dim down or if I had to be right up close. And I was literally, uh, I don't think you could really see the percept, like how big this room is, but I was able to go to the full extent of the wire and still see a, a, a very clear image. So that was very impressive. Is, is work still being done to make the optics brighter still? Um, the... the the optics are being driven mostly by uh, what, what, what the environments will, will, will demand. So at the time, at this moment, we're, we're projecting out of these glasses at about one to two lumens. So this is brighter than our previous iteration, and we'll continue to refine that, whether it's needing to improve the optics or whether it's improving the, the lumens or, or whatever it may be. Um, the, the natural consumer distance that you'll be playing this um, is mostly limited by the cord, um, the HDMI cord. So about four and a half feet would be an appropriate distance, I think, from your, your, your PC or mobile device that you have Cast AR attached to. So you are planning going mobile as well? Of course, yeah. One of our Kickstarter deliverables is that we wanted to deliver a Android experience uh, with Cast AR as well as the PC experience. Okay. So speaking of experiences, uh, you're not just a technology leader, you're, you're also an industry leader as well. Uh, you, and we're proud to say that you joined the, the Immersive Technology Alliance. Right. Why, why did Technical Illusions agree to do this? Well, as you, if you've been following our company, we're a very open and, and authentic company. We, we like to share the information about our progress and our technology and, and how we're approaching the market. And that just becomes stronger when you're in an alliance with other thought leaders and technology leaders in this space. Um, what we're solving here is just one part of a very complex puzzle and, and a very long roadmap of what's to come, and that's in the, in the projection and the, the display experience. But what we, needs to happen in terms of user interface and input peripherals and content development, um, you know, all of these are, are other aspects of the AR and VR experience. And the Immersive Technology Alliance allows us to collaborate and learn and, and, and work with those types of other leaders in this space. Do you think uh, game developers and content makers, do you think they know everything they need to know about VR and AR to continue, or do you think it's important for them to participate with efforts like this? Well, certainly there's a lot of innovation that happens uh, behind closed doors. Um, we love it when those people share those experiences with the world, uh, because everybody can learn from those and progress the industry faster. So um, ultimately, it's up to the comfort level of, of those individuals as to whether they want to uh, be more open with their, their technology and information. We certainly do at Cast AR, uh, I and mean, we welcome you know all of our, our collaborators and competitors you know to participate in these open discussions. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, as I said, I'm equally impressed each time I see an iteration of your of your product. Uh, I, w what is your goal as far as a release date? When will we actually see these things being shipped out? Well, we just announced to our Kickstarter community that we've been making some amazing progress in getting the manufacturability of these glasses underway. Uh, selecting component vendors and working through the contract manufacturers and signing contracts and a lot of the behind the scenes business things that's involved with making a product come to market. So um, with, with that, we anticipate having our developer glasses, the first Kickstarter Starter units uh, available in the early summer time frame. So we're excited about that. And then that will um, then feed into having our commercial Kickstarter units available in Q4. 
Wonderful. Well, congratulations on your continued success. And thank you, by the way, for supporting the industry as you continue to do. Uh, this is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at GDC 2014. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.